I'd like to have Paul Reid here, who has just been announced as our bro's first ever chief executive. How does that feel, Paul? First of all, uh, absolutely honoured. I think um, when I came back to the club uh, nearly three years ago, I was delighted to, to have any involvement with the club at that point. Um, Mike Keir and Johnny Booth met me at the time and at that point they were taking a big risk in terms of creating a, a new role that the club had never had before um, with a commercial director and um, it was up to me to, to prove not just to, to them but to the supporters and everyone that this is a role that first of all the club needed but also it was sustainable by bringing in extra income to cover it and obviously trying to to uh, to push more money into the budget to give the managers and uh, more to spend on players and, and also for us to do more around the stadium to bring Gayfield up to the more modern day standards. So to do that job uh, when I first came in, um, I was really, really, as I say, humble to, 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 to be back. Um, I could have probably looked at that point to to have done more, but it was key for me um, when I first uh, came back to the club that I wanted to spend at least a couple of years getting used to the, the town, the people, the supporters, the club itself, um, to really make me uh, know how it ticks as an organisation, as a town and everything like that, for then, for me to be comfortable enough to then look at expand, expanding my role um, to, to benefit everyone and it's yeah. a role that I'm going to like I've done with everything in my career since I started I'll give everything um, to uh, I make no secret the fact how much um, I, I love the club and uh, the people who are here and, and, and the supporters I, I, I've struck up so many close personal relationships with so many people inside and outside the club um, and I just want to give them all now to be Speaking here now as the chief executive of the club, again, a role that was not here before and it's been created for myself, I think is a, is a huge honour and one that, as I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give uh, everything to to make sure um, that the club, first and foremost, not myself, the club, first and foremost, benefit from. I know you're not one to, to heap self-praise on, but I mean, I, I mean, I can maybe throw forward some of your achievements in that time. You can talk them through. The club had record season ticket sales, record commercial deals. We opened a new club shop. And in that club shop, um, in one season, we sold 2,300 kits, which is phenomenal. Talk through some of your achievements. That's not down completely to me. That's down to the fact that when I came in here, uh, the board of directors that was uh, headed by, by Mike Caird, and obviously Ewan is, is his vice chairman, gave me probably the best available base to build from. You know, Johnny Booth had done an amazing job engaging new commercial partners into the club and uh, and finding new avenue streams. Brian Kirgill, another one who has just worked tirelessly in the community to try and bring revenue into the club. And that for me was unbelievable to be able to come into something. You, sometimes you find when you change and you go to another job or somebody invites you into a job, you're going into it because you've got to kind of pull it up from the boot, boot laces up because it's it's not going well. I came into this and I said this to you right from the word go when we met here um, nearly three years ago. I was coming into a well oiled machine. Um, so that gave me the basis and I think it would be wrong of me not to actually say how much um, these guys did for that to help me, so I don't want to sit here and take credit for it. What I've probably done since I've come in um, is I've spent 22 years um, at a full-time professional football club and I wanted to take that um, experience uh, here and give different ideas, different strategies, different structures in the club that I felt that would make us more professional, um, both on and off the, the, the field. Um, and give us, you know, just a new um, a new way of thinking that could potentially um, work. I'm going to be honest, and you think you've got to be it's there. Some things have worked superbly well. Some things don't. But if you don't try things, then you're not actually you're not you're not uh, trying. That's where I think. If you don't try things, and, and sometimes they make, if you make mistakes, you make mistakes. So, in the, the, the two and a half years that I've been here. Um, that has given me a huge basis of I've seen what I think we've done right and more importantly I've seen what I think we've done wrong and um, we're engaging with the supporters 
on a, a number of levels with the SLO positions because we want to uh, to make sure that we're all going forward as a as a complete unit and um, we uh, we all um, ultimately at the end of the day um, enjoy the success together by 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 learning off each other and so I think the the successes that we have had have not just been down to me. Um, as much as I would like to say, yeah, uh, you know, magic wand that have gone, it's not that case at all. It's been a, it's been a collective. Um, what sets us apart and what's made me um, so so happy to be here is that we're such a, a close knit group of people, um, and we don't have this Russian billionaire that just comes in and pumps in money every month to the club. It's all homegrown uh, funds. Every director, every supporter, um, every staff member, we're all in it together. And that's that's just, you know, what I've loved about about, about coming uh, to Arbroath. And it was just uh, an easy decision to, to extend my stay. Can can tell listening to how passionate and how, uh, how close you are to the club. Your history of the club goes back a long time, I think 26 years it goes yeah. back. Yeah, I came here, I came as a 16-year-old and uh, as a goalkeeper and... I, but there's just some things that you know when you re- immediately when you you, you join a, a club or an organisation. I'm sure you know everyone can uh, associate that with in any walk of life. You just immediately strike up a, a bond with people and also with the what what the organisation or what the club means to you and means to other people. And uh, that was one of the the things that when I United to come here, I probably was never really thinking about extending my stay in football and I, I was looking at other areas to, 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 to further my career um, but the minute it was our growth there was no hesitation and I've said all along um, I'm here as long as the supporters the board and staff want me to be here um, because I want to do what I can to give this club uh, everything uh, I'm using all the experience that I've gained um, trying to make sure that, that we're the best we can be and if it comes a point where that isn't the case, and you know, I would just, I've had an amazing experience here, but I really hope this is, with this announcement, it's the start of a lot more positive and exciting times ahead, not just for me personally, but for the staff, the players, the management, the board, but most importantly, the fans. You talk about exciting times ahead. There's no getting away from it. Last season was very, very difficult for yeah. the club. But since since that period, there's obviously been a, a learning period from the club and there's been a number of positive announcements from the club going forward. Um, yeah. How important is that and how important is it we have that energy going into next season? Yeah, I, th- I think with, with any football club, and you can look at the history of any clubs, there's amazing highs and there's, there's really bad lows. And um, last season was a low, I think. Um, when you look back forensically over the season, biggest issues that we had there was the uh, the injury list was was huge. Um, there was one Friday where I remember myself and Mike uh, sitting in the office, and we had eleven fit players at one point, and we were on the phone to the league, wondering that was the Friday whether we could play the match the next day, and we were able to sign an emergency goalkeeper, bring in a couple of. Uh, couple of new signings just to get us over the line and that's something in 25 years I'd never been involved in before um, so there was disappointments with that we know last season wasn't good enough um, for a number of reasons uh, and I think when you've got that experiences behind you it makes you you either dwell in it or you learn from it and I think we have learned from it and uh, it's making us now more determined than ever to uh, to support um, the manager and the players to try and get us back to being a championship club. I came to this club uh, in the championship. I didn't come to this club to be working in League One, and I'll show League One all the respect, but with the greatest of respect, I want to be uh, in the championship again, and that's my my main focus, is to work hard to, um, to give the manager, the players, uh, you and the chairman and the directors, everything they can to ensure that we've got the best opportunity at this time next season to be sitting hopefully with a trophy in the cabinet or at least going up via the playoffs. So that's that's the main the main goal for, for us um going forward. But yeah, disappointments that we've had uh, have been, you know, I came in and we had the massive highs straight away with the 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 the, the, the chance to go into the, the premiership. Um last season we did what we set out to achieve. Dick 
remit was to stay in the league. We did that, um, and this season has been has been has been more difficult. We know the chairman spoke about it uh, in his interview there. Uh, areas like the hybrid system, uh, they haven't worked. I think they bring um, challenges both uh, financially, but also um, harmony within the team. Um, and that was an area that we decided straight away that we weren't going to continue this year. So we've learned f from that. Um, and I think when the manager did come in, he he came in really only with the three weeks to go to that transfer window. Um, so there wasn't a lot of players going about at that moment in time for him to, to, to get doubled up with the, the, the injury list. He was really dealt probably the worst hand he could have got. Um, so... A lot of things have happened last year that we, we, we wish hadn't happened, but uh, in the main, um, we are really focused to help Jim uh, get this club back to the championship. He's made two magnificent signings so far. Um, to allow him to, to make as, uh, more, we do, and it is a, as a, you know, a line that you probably heard from a lot of people, but it's the truth. We need to get season tickets um, sold because, as I said, we're not... Uh, we're not getting millions pumped into us from 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 abroad. I think we are getting the the money that's generated is by us all. Um, and uh, the more uh, we can do to try and make sure that when the the league season starts, or indeed the league cup season starts, that we are in the best possible position with the best, uh, in our view, best uh, playing squad in the league, will give us the best opportunity to to get back to the championship. A couple of things I want to pick out for the club statement. Um, first of all, it's that your role's coming at no additional cost to the club. Yeah. And secondly, there were there was opportunities elsewhere. For you. Can you touch upon that? Yeah, I mean, I think I think in in any walk of life, when you've got the the years of experience behind me that I, that I did, I think it's quite um, it's quite easy for other clubs to look at that and say, you know, somebody who's been in football for so long. There's positives and negatives on that. You could say that, yeah, on one hand, you've got a lot of experience. On the other hand, you could say, well, you know, you're maybe a dinosaur because I, I came into the, this position that I'm doing uh, in the 90s. So it's a long time ago and a lot of things have changed since then. But I have had opportunities within the last six months to move to other football clubs. Uh, it was a straight thanks, but no thanks. Uh, my commitment when I when I spoke to Mike and Johnny right at the start, I'm here and I said to him, I'm here for as long as you guys want me to. I'm here. Um, to do the job and as you can see from a level of service at Dun United I'm loyal I do want to stress as well when people see uh, promotions within the club they'll immediately think money is extra money is going into that it's not I'm not and I said that right from the word go I'm not it's not about money for me here it's about making sure that we get this club to the, the best uh, of, that we can um, so financially and things, it's all about, I'd rather see the money going into the club and helping us rather than looking at me personally. I both look after me very, very well um, in so many ways. So um, th th it's, it's nice that you've actually stressed that because it's one of these things that I don't really want to be sort of too much pushed out about the fact of that, but it was, it was key for me that this wasn't going to come at any other cost. I just want to use the position I'm in now to better the club and everyone around it. One of the key things was that I knew I had more to offer. Um, I'm not here to tread water. I could easily come in here and sit and do the same job day in, day out with my eyes closed. Um, but I'm not that type of person. I want to be here to push myself. Um, I put pressure, my own pressure on me because I feel that's the best way of doing it. I think if somebody else is putting pressure on you, then you sometimes... You, you, you kind of almost backtrack from that, but I've I put my own pressure on me. No one at the club puts pressure on me. I put my own pressure on me to to to, to deliver. So I spoke to them and said I do believe I've got more to give in within Scottish football as much as with our growth um, for the benefit of our growth in Scottish football. I should add. Um, so that was my main thing that I wanted to expand the role. Um, I knew that there was there was other areas of the club and we do know that we've had issues in certain areas around the club off the field as well we're not we're not blind to that we we look at message boards we look at um, Facebook and Twitter to see what the reaction is because ultimately we know then that, that that if we see what's going on and we're asking fans what's going on we can try and change it so it works better for them 
uh, in certain areas. So that was probably the main thing for me was getting this role and then, then trying to look um, at other ways of of improving things, you know, because one not, of those one of those sorry, interrupt would be the yeah. SLOs that you spoke about yeah, earlier. Yeah, about and, maybe a bridge between the support and the club. Yeah, and, and and it has to be that you know one of the things I did a couple of weeks ago was I, I asked um, a task to to put down um, a few bullet points of areas at the club that they they feel could be better. Uh, I'm a big boy. I've got strong shoulders. I, I, I can take it. You know, if, if we were doing everything right, we would be top of the Premiership. You know, that's the thing. We know that there's areas that the, the club have to improve in. Um, one of the things that we've, issues we've got is that here is we have to rely heavily on on volunteers, and the volunteers are amazing for us. But you look at other clubs that we're probably paired against with, and people put us against, and they've only got three or four in that department that are able to do it. So. We have to find that fine line between bringing volunteers in, trying to give them all the tools that they can to succeed, uh, but giving them the time to learn as well, because we want people to come in here as volunteers and learn um, anything that they want to do. We spoke to the Angus College, we spoke to the schools. If you want to come in and, and do things in here, we've got the opportunities for you to do things in here. It's giving people the time and the, the space uh, to learn, but at the same time, we've got to deliver. One of my main remits is, is to really now is to look across the board, where can we do better? Um, and it's a whole host of things, social media, uh, um, merchandising, hospitality, um, you know, comms, everything that, we're, 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 that the club does off the field, we have to uh, continually learn and improve. Uh, so that's probably my main remit is to make sure that we're trying to bring all that together we're working closer with the community trust. The community trust are our growth. You know, a lot of people have this um, this perception that the, the trust are a separate entity. That, that one thing for me, I'm completely community focused. Um, I have been since I came in. When I came in, and Shelley was there, um, and then and, and Ryan, and and then we have obviously we've got Barry, um, Rich, Georgia. Um, all the guys coming in now. We're keen to make sure that we're all. One and it's it's a case of that we're all um, working together as one. Um, so that's a huge thing for me. There's no point in us going out there with the soundbite. We're a community club, and then we're not actually showing that we are community based and community focused. So that's another area for the club as well. So to answer your question, there's a probably a whole there's a whole host of uh, things that I'm looking to do. But the key thing is there is I'm looking for the feedback from the fans and that's why the, the, the SLO is vital. The SLOs are vital because they are our soldiers on the ground and, they, and the fans know that they, these guys are approachable and these guys will take anything they're saying back to us in the, in the board and with the, the hope that we can do something about it. And my door's always open as well. I've said that right from the word go. I, I work uh, out of here um, every day. Uh, people come in all the time. I, I'm in the front office. I'm not you know, tucked away in a dark room somewhere. I'm I'm in the front office. Anyone's got any questions, anyone's got any opinions or any thoughts about how they can improve things, come and see us. Just honestly it, it's there's nothing uh, that's not a good idea or a bad idea. Um please come and see us. Um and nine times out of ten the club's probably got a very good reason why we've done something. Um and if we haven't we will put our hands up and say we've got it wrong but we'll then try and fix it. So I can't say any more than that about it. <laughs> Losing a, a place in the championship financially will cost us in excess of 160,000 in league, league placings. Um, so ultimately, I have to try and find and plug that gap. Um, I think last season, you know, we, I think we were all optimistic, but I think a lot of us knew maybe February time that there was a, a, a real possibility that the, the team were, uh, were going to go down. Um, so we had to look at other ways to try and plug that gap. We uh, we we've created the Always Our Growth brand, which is going to be the, the fundraising arm of the club to ultimately uh, help us with that because we have to, to to find that money somewhere else. We want to be challenging next season. We don't want to go to League One and stay there. We want to give the manager and the players every opportunity to to to, to win the, the 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 League One and go back to the Championship next year. But to do that, we have to fund that. Um, and to do that we have to do it together so um, that side of things we'd really, we, we're, we're talking about constructing now uh, a, a focus group committee 
who will be in charge of, of, of all of that growth to try and help in any way. And it's not just about people donating money, it's about donating time. So if there's people out there that want to be coming and do voluntary work around the stadium on match days through the week, where we would have to physically, you know, pay wages or, or, or invoices, then then we're open to that as well. That's that's it's not just about writing a cheque or donating money all the time. We're not we're not just looking at that. It's it's, a, it's about everything. Um and then on the commercial side of things, I mean I've been I've been I've been blown away by the, the support of of the, the business community um in our growth especially. Uh the support we get is I've never I've never seen and I mean that when I was at United we it was nothing like the, the support the town uh, and the people and the business community give to this football club. Is there anything else that's likely come forward without going into great detail, but just to get the fans excited about what's lo- what lies ahead? Yeah, I think that the thing we said at the end of the last season, we wanted to draw a line under it. Obviously, I'd mentioned before, we wanted to um, learn from it as well and, and, and look over where we've gone wrong and, and how we can do things better. But I think the key thing for us now was to, was to draw a line in the last season and really then start on a positive. And the positives have been uh, a lot of work that we've done in the last sort of two, three, four months, attracting new partners. So you will see, and you have seen, a lot of new partners being announced into the club that are coming in, who are not only backing the club, but they're backing us in terms of how we want to see the club going forward. Um, it was key that we be, we had our growth businesses in there as well. We didn't want it to be, you know, just companies coming in from all over. We wanted to to have two way, um, you know. Um, working groups with all the, 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 the partners. Um, Journey Call is a perfect example on that one that we're doing, uh, the SP group, we're doing a lot of work there with them in terms of us trying to learn and ways that they have um, uh, really pushed on in their sector. We want to try and learn from them and see if there's things that we can do to benefit the fans in terms of our integration in the fans, but obviously the, the working with the fans as well. Um, and. Park Groves, another one, and um, Angus uh, Tyres, uh, RW Bell, all got huge links to the town. So that was really important for us that we made sure um, that we did that as well. So we're trying to make sure that, that it's all inclusive and we're trying to keep as much in the town as well. But we do have to sometimes go out with um, to make it uh, you know, the, the decisions of, of bringing more finances in. Um, but we are very much the core of us is the town and our growth and we'll never forget that. You talk about the town and the core and I totally agree with you. I think it's probably one of the biggest strengths the club has had over its success story about how close knit the, the community has been and how that's tied in with the club. We've talked about the SLOs, a, l- a little bit more about always our growth and how important that is and you did talk about how that, that might develop slightly. Yeah, I, I, again, people said, and I, and I get it, you know, that People said when we announced it, it was probably the wrong time. But I would argue and say it was it was the right time. And the fact at that point that we'd we had a squad of players that we'd obviously budgeted for twenty players, and we were up to twenty six because of the the injury crisis and things. We probably knew we were staring down the barrel um, of of uh, relegation as well. So we had to to look at other ways to to fund the club. And uh, at that point. Um, it was born out of necessity at that point, but I would like to turn that now uh, into the positives and say that going forward, we, we want to create um, a, a really strong uh, working group of, of, of external people uh, who will work alongside, um, particularly Brian, uh, the vice chair, and myself, um, to drive through different uh, opportunities, uh, fundraising events, um, and and. And, and just a, a, a pool of volunteers that could come in and support the club in any way they feel they can um, to really uh, give us a, a, the best possible opportunity. Um, you see most clubs now have foundations or they have some sort of fans groups that are really proactive in trying to support the club um, financially uh, and that's something that we do have to rely on, um, that we do look at ways... Um, and also, we're not always going to the same well. We're trying to uh, to find the ways um, of of, uh, of of bringing money in that gives people the opportunity to have something back. We're not looking to just say donate money and it goes into a black hole. Um, you know, Task were brilliant in uh, offering us the opportunity uh, last season um, 
of a of a really good cash injection and it went into the upgrade of the dressing rooms uh, and all the kit boxes and things like that so they're not just seeing money going into the club and it's just it disperses into thin air it's it's into certain areas and things and um, that's what we're trying to do with always our growth that if we've got campaigns we might look at sometimes about trying to install a lift at Gayfield so it's more accessible for people um, to get into care the lounge and all the rest of it that could be uh, encapsulated in the, the always our growth brand as well so it's really it's a fighting group to try and support the club um, in any way that they can um, and it's something that as I say I totally understand why at the time people were you know saying why they're asking for money we've got money that, the reality is the the cost to run a football club is huge if, if every player was here on a voluntary basis it would be easy but you've got you've got your you've got your staff costs you've got um you've got your utility costs you've got so many outgoing costs that are in there for us to try and get punch above our weight and we were in a higher weight category than we probably should be uh, last season it did cost um, it did cost considerable amount of money so we have to try and fund that to stay in that sort of area that we want to be we don't want to be a lower half of the League 1 clubs we want to be if we do happen to go down we do want to be in the best possible position to get straight back up um, and for that we we, we we encourage we don't expect that's something we don't expect people to to just but we encourage people to if you've because we've been getting asked so many times what else can we do what else can we do and that's one of the reasons that uh, we, we we brought this um, forward as well that we to give people a, an opportunity to to make a difference and help us in, in certain ways that they can so um, that was the reason that it was it was done probably yeah I, as I said understand uh, the timing of it but there were mitigating cir- circumstances you know, if I had a crystal ball, you'd probably say the best time to do that was when we were, we were riding high uh, two years ago and, and, and then out there. But um, it is what it is and we now need to uh, work together to hopefully really push that brand as the uh, the fundraising arm of the club. And just finally, if, if you could talk, talk directly to supporters, if you could give them a message to supporters right now. Yeah, I, I, I really, it's um, over the time that I've been here and, you know, we in the the support from everyone um, on and off the field has been incredible, and I don't think at times our fans realise how unique we are. A lot of clubs will say that in sound bites, but the the close knit town and the people and how they support the club in, in so many different ways is is, is huge, and it and it's really um, that which keeps me going and what makes us such a special club and. The the whole um, club is about the supporters, so we have to make sure that we're all doing this together. So communication and everything, we want to to really improve that. So we're all everyone knows what's happening as much as we can tell you at times. All these things confidentially we can't, but when we can tell things, we want to be in a position to to be able to to um, to tell supporters. So it's just you know stick with us. Um, buy your season tickets it does give us the best opportunity for uh, competing as high as we can um, if you're in a position to do so buy it now um, sitting and thinking maybe I'll wait till we see who we sign uh, if everyone takes that we can't sign uh, the players that we want to try and expect to, to be uh, fighting next year so um, I'd just like to say thanks uh, to, to everyone. I'd like to thank, obviously, the outgoing chairman, Mike Caird, as well. Uh, Mike brought me to the club, and uh, I'm, I'm really focused on uh, continuing the legacy that he's he's built here uh, further on. Um, I'd like to thank the incoming chairman, uh, Ewan West. Um, absolutely brilliant uh, since I've come in. We've stuck up a really good working relationship, personal relationship as well, which is key. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm here to give... Him and the board, rest of the board, every every uh, bit of um, support and encouragement, and hopefully we're sitting here next year with a trophy in the cabinet. Fingers crossed.